Okay, I've had a couple months with the Fuji X-T1 and I've had several months with the Olympus EM1 and I don't know if I mentioned this originally uh, in my other videos but I did not really plan on having both of these cameras. Uh, I had the EM1 first and I had fully intended to using that as my everyday camera, my main camera, and just have a smaller camera for my laptop bag to take with me you know, for work. Uh, but have the EM-1 be my main camera for, you know, just my general nature shooting, uh, vacations and so on. Um, you know, I got rid of the Nikon D600. And so then the Fuji X-T1 came along and I really just couldn't resist. I had had the X-Pro1 in the past. I loved the image quality, but it was kind of slow. Uh, everybody knows about that you know, as far as the focusing and general operation. So the XT1 fixed a lot of those problems, and um, you know it's all weather sealed and a little bit different body, you know rubber grip and the screen that uh, you can tilt. So after having used both of these cameras now, and I've only used them really with the the 12 to 40 uh, 12 to 40 millimeter f2.8 uh, professional lens on the Olympus EM1 and the 18 to 55 millimeter f2.8 to f4 lens on the Fuji X-T1 and um, both are great lenses. Um, uh, okay, I'll, I wrote this down so I wouldn't stumble along too much. In the X-T1's favor, um, the viewfinder is actually uh, bigger and better. You know, it's just overall much uh, better operation and, uh, you know, of course when you tilt the camera in portrait, uh, portrait uh, orientation, um, the information on the display inside the viewfinder changes, you know, to orientate to uh, portrait orientation also. Not that big of a deal, but um, it is kind of nice to have that. But overall, you know, it's bigger and more, you know, the color looks great in there. Um, but there's really nothing to complain about on the EM1 as far as the viewfinder. And uh, let's see, image quality overall, you know, I, I would probably prefer the X-T1 it's uh, less noisy, obviously. Uh, I think you know anything about these two, two cameras. The uh, EM1 has a smaller four-thirds uh, sensor, and the uh, XT1 has the uh, APS-C size sensor, and uh, what Fuji calls their X-Trans uh, technology. Um, you know, the files are just generally cleaner. Um, the you know the background on the images are, it's just super smooth. And the images, you know, the image area that's supposed to be sharp, that's in focus, you know, is really sharp. Um, on the EM1, you know, there's even at base ISO that I wouldn't call it noise. There's just a little bit of a extra texture in the files, and you know, some people like that. It's actually, you know, pretty good look. I, you know, there's I can't really complain about either camera. I love both of them. So this is just sort of a, you know, some things that I like a little bit better about one versus the other. So. It's really nothing to, you know too much to complain about. Um, depth of field, obviously, if you want more depth of field or shallower depth of field, you would want the XT1 because it has the larger sensor, which would naturally give you a little more shallow depth of field. Um, the smaller sensor on the EM1, actually, uh, well, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, slightly better auto white balance. Both the cameras have really, really good, probably the best white balance, auto white balance I've ever seen on digital cameras. Um, the Nikon D600 that I most recently had, um, really good white balance, auto white balance. Um, and then when I got the EM1, the Olympus EM1, you know, I was thinking to myself, wow, this is the best auto white balance I've ever seen until I got the XT1. And um, it, it's really, you know, I don't normally have to do too much tweaking, uh, except for a few occasions, you know, some indoor lighting. Um, it tends to be a little more difficult for the cameras, you know, for the auto white balance, but overall um, both are really good, but I think the X-T1 is better. Um, and the X-T1 actually has a little, a slightly better, uh, a slightly more accurate autofocus. Now, that's just my personal observation. Your, your, uh, your mileage may vary, your experience may vary, um, but for me when I focus on something, you know, using one of the focus points rather than just the uh, automatic area focus, you know, where it uh, selects the subject for you. I don't usually do that. Um, 
but when I am selecting the focus point, the X-T1 does seem to have a little bit better uh, focus accuracy. Um, now on the EM1, the touch screen obviously is really nice, so you know when you're you can touch the focus and you know, move all that around. Uh, that's really about all I use it for. I don't use it to like navigate through photos when you're viewing photos, um, you know, or menu functions. I don't normally use it that way. I really just kind of use it for um, changing the autofocus area. You can see that, but there's out my kitchen window there on the deck. It's a nice spring day. Well, actually, it's a little overcast, but that's okay. We're looking for some rain and give my plants some water. Um, but yeah, the you know when you touch it too, it, it automatically focuses on the area that you touch, and you could use it. To, you change it right here. Um, if you press that little black button there on the screen, it'll change it so you can actually um, turn touch screen off, or you can set it so that you can actually take a picture when you press the touch screen, which I don't really like doing that. Oh, looks like one of the cats is getting ready to come into the screen here. Um, so the touch screen is great for that, just quickly changing the autofocus point. Um, and okay, speed, just overall, the next thing on the EM1's favor, uh, just the overall speed of operation. Uh, the autofocus is definitely faster than the X-T1 and uh, just general speed, you know, changing menus and so on and turning camera on and getting ready to use it. It just seems everything is a little bit quicker on the EM1. Now the X-T1 is quick, you know, it's not anything really to complain about, but if I had to pick up one camera and I really wanted to be able to rely on you know, really fast autofocus and just doing what I need to do quickly, then I would pick up the EM1. Um, close focusing. Now the EM1, the e, well the X-T1 I guess you could probably get about maybe about a foot away from the lens when you're at 18 millimeters. Uh, and I can't remember if it's you know about a foot also when you're zoomed out to 55 millimeters. But this 12 to 40 millimeter lens, now this is a characteristic of this lens on this camera. Um, obviously it's not going to be the same focal distance, you know, close focusing distance on every lens that you would put on the EM1. but this lens, I mean, it's it's crazy how close you can focus. Like, right... Okay, Tommy. Tommy's looking at the camera. Move back. Um, how close am I? Let's see, I'm about... Let's select the focus point here. I don't know if Tom's going to lay in the video here. No, I guess he is. Alright, so there's Tommy. He likes the XT1, apparently. Um, so I'm about... How close am I? Okay, it's still focusing. That's about maybe two inches from the front of the lens. And that's at uh, 12 millimeter. So let's zoom out to the 40 millimeter, which is the most zoomed out you can go on this lens. Uh, let's see here. So I'm about probably three inches or so. I mean, it's about two inches. That's about the same, really. I mean, it's just crazy how close you can get with this lens uh, for close-up shooting. And since I do a lot of nature um, photography, plants, flowers, things like that, okay, don't smudge the lens, Tom. Um, it's great for that. And um, actually, the extra depth of field is better, you know, for my type of close-up shooting with nature because, um, you know, since you have a more depth of field, you don't have to stop down the aperture to like let's say f8 maybe you'll get away with f5.6 and you'll still keep a faster shutter speed you don't have to worry about bumping up the iso and so on um, so that's uh, okay close focusing and again that's really more related to this 12 to 40 millimeter lens watch out Tom uh, versus on the Olympus versus the 18 to 55 on the XT1 uh, the grip I actually like this grip a little bit better. Um, it's a little deeper and right here at the top uh, it, it kind of sticks out a little bit more so you can actually kind of hang it, hang your finger right in there. And the way the the uh, shutter button is and the front control dial it's sort of at an angle and, and then the rear dial is like right here. So everything I think it just 
perfectly positioned on the EM1 as far as you know your main uh, settings that you would want the access to the control dials and, and if you want to reach up and move the mode dial you know you're right there too now some people would say well you got all the manual controls on the XT1 and it, it's six and one half dozen the other to me I'm you know yes you can change the aperture on the XT1 if you actually have a lens that has the aperture ring um, on the 1855, since the variable aperture, you had to sw flip the switch down to, you know, the, the aperture control mode here. So, and then you can turn the dial uh, to change the aperture, and then changing the shutter speed. And I don't like this. You got to press. Well, once you press it, you're you're moving it. Uh, but on the XT1, you have to press this button down first to start moving the shutter speed. Um, it was the the ISO button that, that you had to hold down if you want to move it at all to any position. It's not once you get past the auto. Um, and that's kind of annoying. I don't really like that. I wish it was kind of a toggled on or off. Uh, or like the shutter speed button where you once you get past auto then you can move it freely. Um, but you know manual controls, you know, or having a dial for each individual control on the XT1, you know, if that's your thing, that's fine. But uh, I haven't really found that it's any slower with the M1. Actually, I think it's a little bit quicker for me because I have these, you know, exposure compensation on the front dial, uh, shutter speed or aperture on the rear dial, and if you go to manual mode, uh, then obviously one is shutter speed, one is uh, um, aperture. So anyway, uh, I do like the grip a little bit better on the EM1. You know, if I could take the sensor out of the Fuji and put it into the EM1, the Olympus. Um, that would probably be like the perfect camera for me. I know that's not technically not possible, but in a perfect world, I would probably take the the Fuji image processing and so on, the sensor, and stick it right in the EM1 body with this 12 to 40, 40 millimeter lens, and that'd be like a killer camera. Um, and the last thing on the EM1's in the EM1's favor is the battery life. The battery life is a little bit better. Um, I don't know if it's actually too much better. It's maybe a little bit better. Uh, but the biggest thing is the uh, battery life indicator is actually more reliable on the EM1. Uh, everybody's been complaining about you know the battery life indicator on you know the Fuji X series cameras like the X Pro One, um, XC1, XC2, and the XT1. It's kind of the same thing. You know, you'll it'll show like a full charge, and then next thing you know, um, it's down to um, almost empty, which is kind of frustrating because you can't really rely on the battery indicator uh, to know what your charge is on the Fuji. But I keep extra batteries with me all the time anyway if I'm going to be out for a while, so it's not that big of a deal. Anyway, I think that's going to wrap it up on these two cameras. You know, I, I had toyed with the idea of maybe selling one, and if I did sell one, maybe, you know, I kind of went back and forth, you know, because of the advantages and disadvantages of these cameras, but uh, I think I'm just going to keep both of them. and. Um, I'll probably buy more lenses for the Fuji first, and um, there's an 18 to, 18 to 135 millimeter lens coming out soon, and I think that one would probably pretty much live on the camera all the time, and it's weather sealed also. So, all right. Well, thanks for watching, and I hope it was somewhat useful. I tend to babble a lot, and uh, not really great at making videos. And this video actually was made on the Olympus EPL3, pretty much fully automated. Uh, again, I kind of suck at video so it is what it is and that's what you get so thanks for watching and have a good day